Hello, I'm Granger Metter. As of 2023, I've worked in the Bartlesville Public Schools for 35 years, and thus for a bit more than one-fourth of the 124 years it has existed. I've prepared this look back at the history of our school district in Northeast Oklahoma. In the late 1800s, there were no free public schools in Bartlesville Indian Territory. Instead, there were subscription schools, with parents paying a tuition of 50 cents to a dollar per month per student. Native American children were not charged, with the Cherokee Nation paying for their education, and sometimes school subscriptions costs were offset by in-kind payments in food or lodging. All that changed in 1899, when Bartlesville Mayor Frank Overlees called for an election to establish a school board. Overlees was elected to the board, along with other merchants and a doctor. Businessman William Johnstone was elected the president of the school board, serving in that capacity for nine years. Guidelines for the schools were printed, and classes were held in a variety of buildings, including Arthur Armstrong's former subscription school. In 1905, Armstrong partnered with Jake Bartles, George Keeler, and William Johnstone in having a two-room frame schoolhouse built at 6th and Cherokee. Garfield School would later be rebuilt in brick, and it expanded with the growing city. Garfield finally closed in the mid-70s, and the community center was built on that land. But in the southwest corner of the community center's parking lot, is a reminder of Bartlesville's first public school. Keeler, Johnstone, and Overlees had struck oil in 1897, and Bartlesville was the site of Oklahoma's first commercial oil well. It produced over 100,000 barrels of oil over a half century. The city was briefly a forest of oil derricks, and by statehood in 1907, it had attracted three smelters employing over 1,000 people in a city that had boomed to 9,000 residents. The city continued to boom into the 1920s, and that brought a number of small schools serving different neighborhoods. Horace Mann Elementary School was built in 1907, one half mile southwest of the Garfield School and next to Bartlesville's original city hospital. The hospital was gone by 1929, and that land was used to expand the school's playground. A 1952 addition to the school was preserved after the school closed and the original building was demolished in the late 1960s. That remnant became the district's media center and was later expanded into the Education Service Center. Since 1974, it has been the location of the boardroom, a small auditorium, and various district offices. The ESC was expanded in 2021 to provide space for technology services. Washington Elementary School was also built in 1907, across the railroad tracks, three-quarters of a mile northwest of Garfield. The original multi-story building was troubled, with foundation and water issues. It was closed in the late 1920s and then burned, to be replaced with a one-story building that, like Horace Mann, was expanded in 1952. Classes at Washington ended in 1978, and the building was used for various purposes until it was sold 20 years later. As of 2023, it was the home of the Humble Road Biker Church. In 1909, over two miles northeast of Garfield, Highland Park School was built in the unincorporated community of Tuxedo. Tuxedo was built on the high ground between Bartlesville and Dewey to the north. The original Highland Park Rural School boasted of being the first three-room model school in the state, complete with a piano and Victrola. In the 1920s, the original building was replaced with a single-story structure, and the Highland Park District was absorbed into the Bartlesville Public Schools in 1930. That building was expanded in 1938, 1948, 1951, and 1953. The school finally closed in 1985 and was used for storage, until it was sold and demolished in 1994. As of 2023, a Quick Trip, a Hampton Inn, and the Cramalot Inn storage facility occupied the former school grounds. Booming Bartlesville itself built another elementary school in 1909. Jefferson was constructed about a half mile northeast of Garfield and looked much like the earlier Horace Mann and original Washington schools. It was expanded in 1924 and 1929, 
and in 1948 an all-purpose room was added, as would be done a few years later at Horace Mann and Washington. Jefferson served elementary school children for 75 years, before finally closing in 1985. The building was sold in 1994 and raised for the construction of the Tory Place Apartments. By 1910, Garfield was still serving all grades, with Horace Mann, Washington, and Jefferson as neighborhood elementary schools. A separate high school was completed in 1910 at 10th and Dewey. It had four floors plus a basement and a clock tower. In 1912, there were 10 teachers and a principal, offering classes in English, math, physics, Latin, German, commercial studies, music, art, expression, history, and economics. The school's athletic teams in that era were the Yellow Jackets, and the school cheer was Ring Around a Rat Tail, Shinny Up a Tree, Bartlesville High School, E, E, E. Something missing from the high school, and most other schools in that era, were black students. For almost a half century after statehood in 1907, black students were sent to the Douglas Segregated School, located a couple of blocks southwest of the Washington Elementary School, at 5th and Virginia. As Bartlesville High School opened in 1910, Miss Lavinia Brown of Emporia State Teachers College joined the faculty at Douglas, less than a mile to the northeast. Douglas grew to four classrooms in 1922, and Bessie Love was the school's first high school graduate in 1927. The school was expanded in 1934, 1938, and 1949, and gained a cafeteria in 1952. Lavinia Brown's Renaissance Club was a major source of support for the school, providing a day nursery and other services. Douglas's marching band, the High Steppers, led its annual homecoming parade through downtown Bartlesville. The school eventually offered vocational classes, speech and debate, and journalism, but its lab science courses were limited, and it offered no world language classes. Lavinia Brown passed away in 1954, and the pallbearers included three former Douglas principals and Charles Cool City Smith, who would coach Bartlesville's only state champion football team the following year. The Bartlesville Board of Education had declined to pay to send the Douglas Dragons football team across the state to play against Boyd High School of Frederick for the OIAA Class B state championship, so the two teams were crowned co-champions. At the end of 1955, the board approved spending $400 to purchase letter jackets for the 20 members of the Douglas football team and to begin the process of integration which would stretch on until Douglas closed in 1971. The facility was sold, and the last of the Douglas School buildings were demolished in 2012. Back in the early boom days, yet another neighborhood elementary school, Lincoln, was built in 1914 in the northwest part of town. It was located near First and Rogers and was expanded in 1920 and 1929. Like the other old elementary schools, Lincoln gained an all-purpose room in 1952. In 1983, Lincoln was closed and sold to K. Vasudevan, who remodeled it into the home of Service and Technology Corporation. Garfield's overcrowding had been eased by the opening of the original high school in 1910, but the boom continued prompting the construction in 1917 of the state's first junior high school. Central absorbed the 7th, 8th, and 9th graders from the city's five elementary schools. William Johnstone, the first school board president, had died in 1915, and his house at 9th and Cherokee had been moved a block south. Central Junior High was built where it had once stood. By 1924, the original high school, designed for 250 students, housed 373, while Central Junior High was packed with 653 students. A major expansion in 1926 allowed Central to serve grades 7 through 12, and additional junior college classes until 1940. The addition included an impressive auditorium that could seat over a thousand, basement shops, and small stages in the English and music rooms. 
Cecil Lefty Kester became the junior high football coach, and he later coached many different district sports teams, from when they were the Yellow Jackets through their transition to become the Wildcats, a pun on oil field wildcatters with team colors of black and gold, symbolizing the black gold that made Bartlesville boom. The 1920s also saw the construction of another elementary school in far south Bartlesville. McKinley was built at 16th and Keeler. It was expanded in 1929, 1938, 1952, and 1956. The school was known for pet, hobby, and band parades. That elementary school closed in 1985, and the building was later used by the Alternative High School, Adult Basic Education, Operation Eagle, and Technology Services until it was closed in 2011 and sold in 2014. A little-known school was the two-room McCaleb School at Oak and 11th, built in 1921. It was renamed Roosevelt in the 1920s after President Teddy Roosevelt died in 1919. As the Great Depression began, two of Bartlesville's three smelters closed, and the Roosevelt Building was lost to time. Like many small towns across America, Bartlesville gained a Carnegie Public Library in 1913. By the late 1920s, it was too small to serve the booming town, and the public library was moved to space in the Civic Center. The city gave the former Carnegie Library building to the school district, which remodeled it into an administration building with offices for the superintendent and the Board of Education. When the Education Service Center opened at the former campus of Horace Mann School in 1974, the district sold the old library building, which later became law offices. The Great Depression of the 1930s brought an end to Bartlesville's first boom, and the school district leveled off at between 3,000 and 4,000 students until the baby boom after World War II. Our schools before the 1940s featured small neighborhood elementaries that lacked lunchrooms, libraries, gyms, special education classes, and air conditioning. Classes began in mid-September, with two days off for Thanksgiving and five days off for Christmas. Bartlesville had few school buses. In the 1930s, students either walked home for lunch, brought a sack lunch, or would go to a local grocery store. In the 1930s, some Central students recalled buying lunches consisting of a sandwich, chips, and a soft drink for 20 cents. In the 1940s, junior high kids at Central could watch Flash Gordon serials in the auditorium at lunch until a fire in 1949, which burned the curtains, stage, and piano, and blistered the seats. The old high school, abandoned in 1926, had fallen into disrepair and was finally demolished in 1939, but traces of it remain as part of a former apartment building on Hensley Boulevard, just west of the railroad tracks. The old school's entry columns and archway are there, and another curious feature of that building are stones carved to match the four suits in a deck of playing cards. By 1939, even though overall district enrollment had stabilized, Central was overflowing. In early 1940, juniors and seniors were relocated three-quarters of a mile south to the new College High School. The project relied on a federal Public Works Administration grant, a local bond issue, and the district's building fund, and was built on land purchased from John H. Kane and C. E. Burlingame. Architect John Duncan Forsyth had designed the Marlin Mansion in Ponca City a decade earlier, and had just designed the Daniel Webster High School in West Tulsa. He used many of the same finishes for Bartlesville's College High, including terrazzo stairwells and terracotta tile corridors, and the two schools' auditoriums were quite similar. Like Webster, College High was originally meant to be built in brick, but employees of the Dewey Portland Cement Company, which was suffering through the Great Depression, successfully petitioned the Bartlesville School Board to have the new high school built of monolithic concrete. Forsyth reworked the exterior in a streamlined, modern style of the late Art Deco period. A matching concrete manual training building to the south was funded by Frank Phillips, who wanted to help the city schools with vocational shops 
but also wanted a court for his Phillips 66ers corporate basketball team. By the end of its first decade, College High was packed with students. A track and field were added in 1952, and a stadium classroom addition in 1954. The stadium was named for Coach Lefty Custer, who had died in 1953 after coaching many sports in Bartlesville for almost 30 years. In 1956, unfinished basement space, which had been used as a firing range during World War II, was renovated into a cafeteria. And in 1958, a multi-story classroom annex was added between the stadium and the auditorium. Soon after World War II, the Jane Phillips School was built in 1948 in the southwest part of town, not far from the remaining smelter. It was named for Jane Gibson Phillips, the wife of Phillips Petroleum Company founder Frank Phillips. The school had additions in 1951 and 1954 and would remain in use until a replacement was built in 1984. One final school building in the original part of Bartlesville was the three-room Southview School, built a few blocks southeast of College High in 1950. It always only served the youngest students and once had elaborate May Day celebrations and family picnic days on its shady grounds. After 1985, it held programs for preschoolers with special needs, such as Head Start and the Bell Ringer School. It was closed in 2003 and eventually became a private residence. The baby boom led to outlying housing additions, including Oak Park Village, on high ground a mile north of Bartlesville. In 1956, Oak Park Elementary opened on seven acres laid aside by the developer. It had additions in 1960, 1961, and 1963, and a full renovation in 1984. The limited size and isolation of the Oak Park neighborhood kept the school small. When the baby boom was followed by a baby bust, The rest of the district eventually consolidated into six larger elementary schools, but Oak Park's isolated location allowed that school to survive until 2011, when budget cuts finally led to its closure. The unincorporated tuxedo area northeast of Bartlesville grew with the baby boom. Highland Park had multiple additions, and in 1957, the district built a few classrooms at a new Wilson Elementary on the northeast edge of town. A gym was added in 1965, and the school expanded in 1984 when Highland Park was closed. Wilson grew again in 1993 and 2012, and a new entry, lobby, and offices were added in 2023. Highland Park and Wilson were in the old Highland Park District, which had been annexed into Bartlesville schools in 1930. A couple of miles to the south was the separate Limestone School District. Once a one-room schoolhouse for Delaware Indians, in 1939, Limestone was rebuilt by the Work Progress Administration as a three-room schoolhouse with an auditorium. By 1951, the baby boom was on, and Limestone had absorbed the small Middale, Rice Creek, and Fish Creek schools and become a dependent school district that bus students in grades 7 and up to Bartlesville. Limestone was expanded in 1950, 1953, 1954, and 1956 before finally being absorbed into the Bartlesville Public Schools in 1962. It served as the district elementary school until 1986 and then became the home of the district's buildings and grounds department until it was sold in 2007 and demolished to be replaced by Armstrong Bank. More housing additions prompted the Limestone District to build on land that from 1907 to 1939 had been the one-room Prairie School. A new four-classroom Ranch Heights School was built there in 1957. Charles Skinner had saved the old bell from the Prairie School, and it was mounted in a cupola atop the new building. Ranch Heights grew with the baby boomers in 1958 and 1961, became part of the Bartlesville Public Schools in 1962, and had more additions in 1993 and 2007. The latest addition brought a new entrance and a new foyer. You can still find the original bell of the one-room Prairie School in the foyer at Ranch Heights. In 2024, the school is slated to expand to 38 classrooms, catching up with its sister school, Wayside. Wayside was also built by the Limestone School District, but in 1959, a couple of years after Ranch Heights. Like Ranch Heights, it began with four classrooms and was annexed into Bartlesville Public Schools in 1962. Wayside grew again and again, with additions in 1962, 83, 94, and 2008. 
By 2022, it had become the district's largest elementary school with over 700 students. An expansion under construction in 2023 might be the final addition at Wayside, but never say never. George Roberts was lucky enough to be the district superintendent for the duration of the baby boom from 1947 to 1965. During his watch, the district would triple in enrollment from 3,000 to 9,000 students. It built seven new schools and annexed three more as he and the various school boards continued to focus on small neighborhood elementary schools. The new Pennington Hills housing development east of Highway 75 led to the construction of Will Rogers Elementary in 1955, which had additions in 1960 and 1963. Like Wilson and Oak Park, it originally had exterior doors and many classrooms. The elementary school was closed in 1986, and the building became a training center with a teacher workroom and curriculum offices for many years. It was briefly reactivated as a school for pre-kindergarten and kindergarten students from 2006 to 2010, while early childhood pods were constructed at Ranch Heights, Wayside, and Wilson. After that, it housed many different services that had been relocated from the old McKinley School. Eventually, Will Rogers was sold to Paths to Independence, a private school for children with autism. A final baby boom elementary school was Hoover, built on a 70-acre site south of Sooner Park. It began as classrooms with no hallways in 1959 and was expanded in 1961. The school was designed for 250 students, but had 400 by the 1990s using a multitude of portable buildings. The school was revamped with more classrooms, a library, cafeteria, and gymnasium in the early 1990s. The baby boom had been accommodated in the elementary schools by expanding existing schools and building many new ones, but children grow up, and Central Junior High was joined by a new junior high on the east side of town, on the same 70-acre site where Hoover was built. Originally slated to be called East Side, cheerleaders convinced the school board to name it Madison instead. So Madison Junior High was built in 1958 in a California desert modernism style. That meant freestanding brick walls, thin partition walls, tiny skylit interior courtyards, freestanding connecting corridors, and lots of single-pane glass. The gym had an unusual ponytail roof design, which was a bit too accessible for curious junior high kids. Light and climate control problems led to many windows being filled in over the years, and the building did not age well. After Bartlesville High School was expanded from grades 11 to 12 to grades 9 through 12, Madison students relocated in 2015 to a neighboring campus. Central Middle School students occupied Madison in 2015-2016, while Central underwent a renovation, and then Madison was demolished. For World War II, many students across the nation left school after the 8th grade, but high school completion soared during the Great Depression. And during the baby boom, national graduation rates rose to 70% and have remained at or above that level ever since. Madison Junior High had been built to accommodate the baby boom, and the same enrollment pressure hit College High hard. The campus was designed to serve 1,300 students, but by 1964, it held almost 2,000. Four portable buildings, multiple day schedules, and an auxiliary cafeteria only partially alleviated the pressure. That year, voters approved over $2 million to build a second high school on the same 70-acre tract that already had Hoover Elementary and Madison Junior High. Sooner High opened in 1966 for sophomores and juniors and began serving grades 10 through 12 in 1967-68. The Sooner Spartans, with colors of Kelly Green and Old Gold, became intense rivals for the Call High Wildcats. Each side would burn the other's mascot before their big football game. The older College High, like most city schools up to that time, had not had air conditioning, but Sooner High was built with it. So they added air conditioning at College High and actually waited until that was complete before turning on the cool air at Sooner. Sooner High was known for innovative instructional methods and outstanding fine and performing arts programs, but advanced placement courses were limited to College High. Sooner High also had a junior reserve officers training corps while the Vietnam War raged on. But the baby boom ended 
just as Sooner High opened. District enrollment began to fall, and within a decade had dropped by one-fourth. The district had peaked at 21 operating schools. By 1978, integration and falling enrollments had led to the closure of the old Garfield, Horace Mann, Douglas, and Washington schools. In 1968, City Service left Bartlesville, taking 900 employees with it, but Phillips Petroleum still thrived. Its 1927 and 1930 headquarters had been expanded with the massive Adams Building in 1950 and the 19-story Phillips Building in 1964. Tri-County Tech opened in 1968 as the first vocational school in Oklahoma. As its offerings expanded, high school metal, auto, and wood shops gradually disappeared. The 1970s were a time of increasing inclusion in public schools. In 1972, Title IX boosted girls' sports. In 1975, the federal government mandated that all students with special needs be provided a free and appropriate public education. A grant-funded alternative high school program began in 1977, but the district had virtually no bond issues in the 1970s. When Dan Nineswander came down from Ottawa, Kansas to lead the district, he realized that massive consolidations and reconfigurations were needed. Bond issue proposals in 1980 failed, but a smaller one in 1981 passed. It funded a classroom addition at Sooner and a parking lot at College High, and in 1982, Sooner High and College High were consolidated into a single high school. The former Sooner campus became a mid-high for grades 9 and 10, and the former College High became Bartlesville High School for grades 11 and 12. The students opted to become the Bartlesville Bruins, with colors of dark blue, light blue, and white. As for sports records, from 1948 to 1982, the College High Wildcats had fielded 33 state champion teams, 20 in swimming, 7 in golf, 3 in tennis, 2 in baseball, and 1 in basketball. The Sooner High Spartans had two state champion teams in golf and one in softball. Over the past 40 years, the Bartlesville Bruins have fielded 39 state champion teams, 20 in swimming, 7 in cross country, 4 in gymnastics, 3 in basketball, 2 in golf, 2 in softball, and 1 in baseball. And by 1983, the district still had 16 schools, including several old elementaries that lacked air conditioning, gymnasiums, dedicated libraries, cafeteria kitchens, and adequate space for special education. The shortcomings of those old schools were highlighted, and voters approved a bond issue to fund several changes. A new Jane Phillips Elementary was constructed immediately south of the one built in 1948, sized to absorb the students from both the original Jane Phillips School along with Lincoln Elementary. The new school was a brick, two-story building, the exterior wall relief of two school children from the original building was preserved outside the entrance of the new school, which opened in November 1985. Renovations in 2013 included a sloped metal roof, and the interior finishes were updated in 2017. The 1983 bond issue also funded the renovation of the Oak Park, Wilson, Hoover, and Wayside Elementary Schools. The expansions allowed for the eventual closure of the Highland Park, Will Rogers, and Limestone schools. The 1983 bond issue also funded the construction of a new elementary school on the former Shawnee Athletic Field, south of 13th Street and west of Choctaw. Kane was built just southwest of the district bus barn and warehouse. It absorbed the students from the McKinley, Jefferson, and Southview schools. Richard Kane Elementary was named after the man who served as the Board of Education's attorney from 1947 into the 1990s. It opened in 1985, just in time to experience the record-setting Caney River flood of 1986. The flood put six inches of water into the building, but there was enough warning to save most books, equipment, and supplies. The adjacent warehouse and transportation facilities suffered $200,000 in damage. Custer Field at the high school was also flooded, and three to four feet of water damaged rooms in the lowest levels of the stadium and the field house. That same year, Central and Madison Junior Highs had become middle schools for grades 6 through 8. By 2023, the Central Cubs and the Madison Mustangs had become Bruins, 
and the various elementary school mascots had also been retired. The 1980s were a tumultuous time for Bartlesville in general. Oil prices had skyrocketed in the 1970s and early 1980s, with Bartlesville growing by about 5,000 people. Phillips Petroleum peaked with over 9,000 employees in Bartlesville. Most of the company's original headquarters building was demolished, with 43,000 of its bricks reused in the construction of the new 15-story Plaza Office Building and adjacent Tower Center. Washington Park Mall opened in 1984. A division of Sears built it, and Sears soon celebrated its 100th anniversary, with students from Richard Kane Elementary taking a field trip to peek behind the scenes at the Sears store in the local mall. But the 1980s also brought an oil bust, and attempts by corporate raiders T. Boone Pickens and Carl Icahn to take over Phillips Petroleum. Fighting them off accelerated corporate downsizing, which saw the company's local workforce diminish by almost three-fourths between 1982 and 2002, when Phillips merged with Conoco and the corporate headquarters moved to Houston. The oil bust meant that the 1980s were the only decade in which Bartlesville lost population. The city's population had recovered by 2000 and grew slowly in the following decades. That translated to a district enrollment that was fairly stable at about 6,500 students from the mid-1970s to 2000. The ConocoPhillips merger led to district enrollment stabilizing a bit lower at about 6,000 students into the early 2020s. The 1990s were a difficult time for the school district. Teachers across the state walked out for four days to force House Bill 1017, which funded raises and class size reductions, through the legislature. Two of the three millage levies needed to run the district failed in May 1991 after polling places were shifted, requiring a revote in June. A 1991 bond issue that would have funded a new high school near Washington Park Mall moved Central to the former high school, and closed Central itself, failed with an 80% no vote. That prompted the first of four superintendent changes just during the 1990s. While three of four bond issue questions did pass in 1993, a 1995 bond issue completely failed, and that year a budgeting error led to a $1 million shortfall. Five district officials and all six school board members were indicted by a grand jury. The charges were later dismissed, but the superintendent and finance director resigned. Dozens of jobs were cut, and a three-year assessment of ad valorem taxes was imposed to pay for a missed district payroll and to make vendors whole. But a 1993 bond issue did fund much-needed renovations at Central Middle School and additions at Madison and five elementary schools. A 1998 bond issue funded an expansion of the mid-high. In the late 20th century, technology became more important in schools. In the late 1960s, the district had implemented its first student information system using an IBM mainframe computer housed at Oklahoma State University and video terminals at each high school. In the 1970s, the Education Service Center had a data processing area with IBM punch card units that eventually became video terminals. Slide rules were replaced by calculators, and a few microcomputers trickled into the schools, but the district lagged technologically in the 1990s. Voters rejected bond issue questions for technology items in both 1993 and 1995, even as the World Wide Web began to revolutionize connectivity. Things finally began to improve in 1998 when voters approved a maintenance bond issue that included electrical capacity upgrades at the schools. Eventually, computer labs would appear in every school, and every teacher desk would have a desktop computer. In 1999, Dr. Gary Quinn started his 17-year tenure as superintendent, one which would rival George Roberts' long oversight through the baby boom. Soon, the town was no longer the headquarters for a Fortune 500 company, which brought demographic challenges. About one-fourth of the district students were on free and reduced lunches in the early 1990s, and that figure would more than double. There was a massive increase in the number of state and federal tests required of students, and poverty and low test scores go hand in hand. Under pressure from school board members, Quinn focused on lower class sizes in the elementary grades, data teams for assessment and remediation, and a narrowing of the curriculum in a successful quest 
to boost district test scores and rankings. Quinn also built coalitions that passed six out of seven bond issues, including the three largest in district history when adjusted for inflation. The biggest bond issue was in 2001, and it focused on updating the high school. Additional parking and practice fields were followed by a new science wing, a new fine arts center, and large new field house. The project concluded with a remodeling of the 1939 auditorium into a new home for the library. Another large bond issue in 2007 funded an indoor practice facility, new windows and lockers, and a video projector in every classroom, along with early childhood classrooms at Ranch Heights, Wayside, and Wilson. The Great Recession of 2008 led to drastic cuts in state funding for schools, forcing the district to consider restructuring its secondary schools. A 2012 bond issue failed, coming on the heels of the closure of Oak Park Elementary and again making the mistake of proposing to end classes at Central. The district refocused later that year on expanding Richard Kane Elementary and doing basic maintenance while getting community input on its secondary schools. In 2013, the second largest bond issue in district history funded expanding the high school to relocate 9th and 10th graders from the mid-high, formerly Sooner High. The mid-high became the new home for Madison Middle School, and Central Middle School underwent another renovation, which included a new gymnasium. In 2015, the district received a $1.7 million grant from Phillips 66 for STEM programs in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The 1956 basement cafeteria at the high school was remodeled into a state-of-the-art innovation laboratory, as were some former science labs at Madison and various rooms at Central, including what had been an auto shop a century earlier servicing Model Ts. In 2017, the Barlesville Public Schools Foundation raised funds to bring STEM modules into all elementary school classrooms. Since it was formed in 1985, the foundation has provided over $3.5 million to support creative instruction and facilities in the district. As of 2023, it was awarding about $50,000 per year in grants to teachers. But the vast majority of the district's budget comes from the state, and by 2018, state funding reached a crisis point. Oklahoma had cut its funding far more than any other state, and experienced multiple revenue failures. Both the state and the district were forced to hire record numbers of emergency certified teachers as interest in teaching in Oklahoma evaporated. Barlesville patrons and students joined the local Board of Education in promoting a statewide suspension of classes if the legislature did not act to boost school funding. When no legislative plan developed, District officials and Representative Earl Sears, the former principal of Central Middle School, successfully promoted a plan that earned 75% supermajorities in the legislature to fund the largest teacher pay raise and largest increase in public school funding in state history. But teachers were dissatisfied with the plan's lack of operational funding and shut down the schools of about a half million of the state's 700,000 students. After eight days, Bartlesville led the way back to school. Recognizing his leadership throughout the crisis, the Oklahoma Foundation for Excellence awarded Superintendent Chuck McCauley the Oklahoma Medal for Excellence in Elementary Secondary Administration. McCauley led the district to overwhelming approvals of multiple bond issues, and in 2019, Bartlesville finally began offering agriculture education. During spring break in 2020, the State Board of Education ordered all in-person classes halted statewide because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thankfully, the district had been steadily expanding a Chromebooks program since 2016, so when the pandemic struck, all middle and high school students already had a take-home Chromebook, so they were able to continue their education virtually. The district scrambled to provide cellular hotspots to students lacking home internet, and in a few months had a Chromebook for every elementary school student. That helped the district weather two years of frequent quarantines and three years of infection isolations, with the pandemic finally easing in the spring of 2023. 
District enrollment had dipped during the pandemic, with some students opting for virtual school outside of the district. Since then, district enrollment has risen steadily, both with the easing of the pandemic and virtual classes taught by the district's own teachers. In 2023, district enrollment was the highest it had been in over 20 years. That concludes this look at the history of the Bartlesville Public Schools. I appreciate the many colleagues, students, parents, school board members, and fellow Bartians I have worked with for 35 years here in Bartlesville. They have all ensured that it is a great time to be a Bruin.